Hello, today our group will talk about the commercial banking industry in India. So here's a quick introduction. In India, the Banking Regulation Act 1949 regulates the commercial banks. The primary activities are to accept deposits and grant loans to individuals, industries and government. They are broadly classified into public sector banks, private sector banks, foreign banks and regional rural banks. Public sector banks. It is called public sector as major ownership rests with the government. SBI is an example of a public sector bank and after the merger of associate banks, it has in terms of volume obtained a position of among top 50 banks in the world. Private sector banks. Here the majority shareholding lies with the individuals and corporations. The banking rules and regulation by RBI apply to private sector banks too. There are a total of 22 private sector banks in India. Some of the examples are HDFC Bank, ICICI Bank, Axis Bank and Kotak Mahindra Bank. Foreign Banks These banks are headquartered outside of India and have branches in India. They function as per the regulations of the home country as well as the country they have operations in. Some foreign banks in India include Bank of America, Royal Bank of Scotland and HSBC Bank. Lastly, regional rural banks. They mostly operate in regional areas in India but have branches in some urban areas too. The primary objective is to provide credit support to weaker sections of the society such as small enterprises, artisans and agricultural farmers, wage disbursement to workers, etc. Also, they cover rural and semi-urban areas where financial services don't usually reach. Having been introduced to the commercial banking industry, we would like to take this forward by doing a personal analysis of this industry. The first factor that I'll be taking is the political factor. Banking sector is highly regulated and affected by the governments. Important decisions like liquid assets and how to keep them, how much is the quantity that should be kept are influenced and taken by the government. It is important as these banks hold a majority of people's saving. The second point being RBI, that is Reserve Bank of India and the Union Government from time to time frame policies which affect this sector. To gain advantage of a self motives, some politicians or even the government influence these banks' decisions by appointing the chairperson or the senior executives of their own choice such that the decisions are in their favor. There is a common practice of waiving off the loans for the farmers so that they can attract their votes but this hampers the profits and earnings of the bank. The second factor would be economic factor. Covid as we know has greatly and adversely affected the banking scenario. People are refraining from taking loans, they are reducing the banking transactions and this has put a halt in the growth of the sector. Also. The increased rate of cyber crimes and cyber thugs have also influenced this factor. Now, RBI from time to time or half yearly frames policies like the repo rate or the reverse repo rate which affects the functioning of the bank. So this is also a major consideration when we talk about the dynamic of this industry. Next, limits on FDI and union budget savings are one of the important key factors which the government takes while framing the budget. This one way or other affects the functioning of the banking industries. There are also many other factors like concessions and facilities provided by the uh, union government which affect the banking industry. Trade rates around the world, whether it is rupees against dollars or rupees against pound, play a huge and significant role on the functioning of the economy. The India's position in the economic scenario molds this effect positive or negative in the favor of India or against it. And next, I'll be talking about the most important factor in the economic scenario, which is the presence of foreign banks. Since liberalization and globalization, foreign banks have been coming to India, but their presence have been limited to metropolitan and urban cities. And their presence in rural areas is not very much as compared to other areas. This disrupts the uniformity of the presence and affects the economic factor of this industry.
coming to the social perspective a lot of people in the rural areas still believe in borrowing money from money lenders or landlords this limits the amount of business that commercial banks can do in these areas in the last few years we have seen a paradigm shift in the lifestyle of indians with increasing buying power they are demanding more high end and luxury goods and are also willing to take on more loans this has boosted the commercial banking business and given them a new horizon to look into we are becoming a cashless society hence banks that do not move their services online are sure to lag behind moving on to the technological aspect adding tech savvy services like sms banking atm machine facilities etc can help banks increase their customer base the rise of fintech companies is proving to be a great threat to traditional commercial banks online banking is prone to risks of fraud privacy breach hacking etc hence it becomes necessary for banks to provide their customers with a strong and protected online banking system and portal coming to the environmental factors by promoting cashless and online banking commercial banks are also going paperless this helps in environment as less paper is consumed in everyday business operations some have even switched to publishing their annual reports in only soft copies Businesses of commercial banks are affected by natural uh, factors like natural disasters, green products, etc. These often disrupt the functioning as they are always followed by reforms and restructuring. Increasing the working age population has been the contributing factor towards a more sustainable and innovative business environment in India. On the part of the banks, not much importance is given to the natural environment. In terms of opening a branch, very little consideration is given to this factor. Now. Um, going into the legal factors, we have a uh, presence of major union of bank employees like EIBEA uh, requires banks to concentrate some of its attention to the union and their demands. Various security laws, legal requirements and government regulations affect the business es businesses. Especially now the COVID-19 guidelines which are not much instrument have been affecting the businesses. RBI notifications can uh, bring out changes in the industry, rules such as abolition of branch licensing, passing a special rule to speed up loan recovery, etc. These are the ways by which a legal structure can affect banking. Also, as per uh, RBI guidelines, uh, banks are supposed to maintain capital requirements, comply with the changes in CRR and SLR percentages which uh, reduces a bank's loanable funds. Other guidelines on dealing with uh, stressed assets are failed to be lacking and therefore there is a prevalent public demand for reforms in commercial banking sector especially in public sector banks that have to deal with highest level of non-performing assets HDFC Bank was incorporated in August 1994 in the name of HDFC Bank Limited with its registered office in Mumbai, India the full form of HDFC is Housing Development Finance Corporation. As part of liberalization of Indian banking sector in 1994, it was amongst the first few to receive approval from RBI to set up a private sector bank. The bank commenced operations as a scheduled commercial bank in January 1995 with its registered office in Mumbai, Maharashtra. HDFC Bank Limited, as of date, is an Indian banking and financial service company which has branches all across India. It also has global presence in Dubai, Hong Kong and Beirut. It is the largest bank in India by market capitalization. To be a world-class Indian bank is HDFC's mission statement. Traditionally, HDFC concentrated on working capital loans, relatively small ticket products that companies can use to finance routine operations. Now with competitors facing sluggish growth in their corporate portfolio, HDFC Bank is strengthening its position by expanding into term loans, which are longer duration loans typically taken by companies for asset creation. Besides organic growth, HDFC has also took the acquisition route. In a milestone transaction in Indian banking industry, Times Bank Limited was merged with HDFC Bank Limited effective 26th February 2000.
This was the first merger of two private banks in the new generation private sector banks. On May 23, 2018, the amalgamation of Centurion Bank of Punjab with HDFC Bank was formally approved by Reserve Bank of India to complete the statutory and regulatory approval process. Talking about the products of HDFC Bank, the various types of products that HDFC Bank offers are, uh, you know, uh, various types of bank accounts like savings account, current account, salary accounts, deposit accounts, uh, rural accounts, pension accounts, etc., etc. Uh, apart from that, there are also various types of loans. For example, car loans, business loan, home loans, good loans, and so on. The various types of cards offered are debit card, prepaid card, forex card, uh, loan on credit card, etc., etc. Uh, investments uh, offered are National Pension System, Atal uh, Pension Yojana, Invest Track, Public uh, Provident Fund. Uh, there are various types of insurance plans also that HD, uh, FC has, for example, motor insurance, travel insurance, uh, home insurance, two wheeler uh, uh, insurance, and so on. The various banking facilities uh internet banking phone banking sms banking and so on so these are the products of hdfc bank now talking a bit about the history of uh, how this bank came into being is that the housing of uh, development finance corporation limited for hdfc was uh, you know it was one of the first uh, institutions to receive uh, in principle the approval of reserve bank of india to set up a bank in private sector and it happened way back in 1994 uh, with rbi's policy of liberalization of banking industry HDFC Bank started operations in 1995 when it launched an initial public offering, public offering of 50 crores and was listed on the Bombay Stock Exchange as well as the National Stock Exchange in the same year. In its initial years of growth, the bank launched retail investment advisory services, online real-time net banking and became the first bank to launch an international debit card in association with Visa. Following the launch of these, credit card business of the bank was also started. Some of the key points leading to the expansion are, firstly, the amalgamation of the Times Bank which the HDFC, with the HDFC Bank, which was the first merger of two new generation private banks in India. In September 2003, they entered the housing loan business through an arrangement with HDFC Limited and then further commenced direct lending to self-help groups in the subsequent years. In 2005, the bank increased their stake in HDFC Securities Limited from 29.5% to 55%. Consequently, HDFC Securities Limited became a subsidiary of the bank, following which HDB Financial Services Limited became a subsidiary company in 2007. The Durian Bank of Punjab Limited was also amalgamated with the bank in 2008. The amalgamation added significant value to HDFC Bank in terms of increased branch, network geographic reach and customer base and a bigger pool of skill manpower. In the same year, the bank opened their first overseas commercial branch which offers the bank suite of banking services including treasury, trade finance products and wealth management products. Some of the key initiatives of the bank include the introduction of the missed call banking service that allows customers to use banking services without having to visit the bank. Within a few weeks, a little more than a million customers started using this service. In 2015, 
HDFC Bank launched the 10 second personal loan approval service, thereby becoming, becoming the first in the retail lending space to fully automate the process of loan approval and disbursement. One of the major break, breakthroughs of the bank includes the introduction of loans at ATMs. This was the country's first innovation to turn ATMs into loan dispensing machines, further extending the functionality of the bank's ATMs.